OK, so in this video, I'm going to find the Maclaurin series for arc cosine of 2x up to the term in x to the 5. Now, I'm going to go through two different ways of doing this. OK, um, so I'm going to go through the full Maclaurin series first, and I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing it. OK, so the first thing is I would be saying that f of x is equal to arc cosine of 2x. So I need to differentiate this. Now, the derivative of arc cosine x is actually in your formula booklet. OK, so um, you should find it as minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. OK, so because you've got 2x, the derivative of the inside has got to come outside using the chain rule. So we would actually have minus 2 times... Um, so minus 2 over the square root of 1 minus, now it's not x squared because it's actually the 2x, so 1 minus 4x squared. So you've got to uh, square the 2x, OK? So that would be our first derivative. Now, if you were then thinking, OK, well, I need to differentiate this again, OK, so I'm going to rewrite this as minus 2, uh, 1 take away 4x squared to the minus a half. OK, so I'm going to have to differentiate this several times. So f double prime of x. OK, so the derivative of the inside is minus 8x. That's going to multiply with what's in front. So I've got minus 2 already. I've got minus 8x coming outside. I've got the minus a half coming down to the front. And I'm going to take one from the power. OK, so simplifying this, I've got minus 2 times minus half, which is just going to be 1. So I've got minus 8x, 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 3 halves. OK, now I'm going to need to differentiate this again. And so I'm going to have to bring in the product rule now. OK, so we've got the first minus 8x times the derivative of the second. OK, so the derivative of the inside has got to come outside, so we've got minus 8x coming outside. The power is coming down to the front, so minus 3 halves. And then 1 take away 4x squared, take 1 from the power, so minus 5 halves. Plus the second times the derivative of the first, so that would be just take away 8 lots of 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 3 halves. So let's simplify that. So we've got, right, we've got uh, 8, 8, 64 times by 3 divided by 2. So minus 96x squared, 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 5 halves, take away 8 lots of 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 3 halves. Right, now I've got to differentiate again. Right, so let's just go with 4 of x. OK, right, first of all, differentiate this term. So we've got the first minus 96x squared times the derivative of the, of the second. So we've got minus 8x coming out to the front. We've got minus 5 halves coming down to the front. And we're going to take 1 from the power. OK. Then we've got uh, the second times the derivative of the first. So, what's that, 96 doubled, 192. So we've got take away 192, uh, oh, sorry, x. 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 5 halves. And then we've got to differentiate this term. So we've got minus 8 times minus 8x, 1 take away, oh, I've forgotten the minus 3 halves, times by minus 3 halves, 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 5 halves. So what does this simplify to? So we've got the minus 96 times by minus 8 times by minus 5 halves. So that's minus 1920x cubed. 
Oh, can't write a three anymore. Let's try that again. Uh, one, take away four x squared, the minus seven halves. Um, right, then I've got take away 192 x, one minus four x squared. Okay, um, then I've got this, so take away 8 times minus 8 times minus 3 halves, so minus 96, so minus 96x, um, oh, that was to the minus 5 halves there, wasn't it? And this is to the minus 5 halves as well. Okay, so actually... I could simplify that, I could bring those two together, couldn't I? So minus 192, take away 96, so minus 288, so minus 1920x cubed, 1 minus 4x squared to the minus 7 halves. Um, take away 288x, 1 minus 4 x squared to the minus 5 halves. <sighs> right. Now, the thing is, I'm going to need another one, aren't I? Because I need to get up to the term in x to the 5. OK. So, um, right. Got to go again, then. Right. F5 of x. Okay, fifth derivative. So we've got the first times by the derivative of the second. So minus 8x times minus 7 halves. 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 9 halves. Plus the second times the derivative of the first. So 1920 times by 3. So take away 5760x squared, 1 minus 4x squared to the minus 7 halves. Then I've got the derivative of this, so using the product rule again. So minus 288x times by minus 8x. And I've got the minus 5 halves coming down to the front. 1 minus 4x squared to the minus 7 halves. OK. Plus the second times the derivative of the first. So take away 288. 1 minus 4x squared to the minus uh, 5 halves. OK, so let's simplify this. So we've got the minus 1920 times minus 8 times minus 7 halves. So we've got minus 53,760x to the 4, 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 9 halves. Now these two terms I'm going to be able to combine, because they're both going to have the x squared, they're both going to have the same uh, minus 7 halves as the power. So minus 5760. Take away 288 times minus 8 times minus 5 halves. So that's take away 11,520. That's going to be x squared. 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 7 halves. And then I've got the minus 288. 1 take away 4x squared to the minus 5 halves. OK? Right. OK. So now I've got to evaluate each of these at 0. So f of 0, I'm going to have inverse cosine of 0, which is pi over 2. Right, f prime of 0. So substitute 0 in there for the x. I'm going to get minus 2 times 1 to the minus 1 half. So that's just minus 2. Now, f double prime of 0, because you've got x at the front, that's just going to make everything 0. So that's 0. Third derivative at 0, well, that's going to be 0. And so we're just going to have minus 8 times 1. So that's minus 8. 
Now the fourth derivative at zero, well that's going to be zero because you've got the x cubed there, and that's going to be zero because you've got the x there, so that's zero. And the fifth derivative evaluated at zero, well that's going to be zero because the x to the four, that's going to be zero because the x squared, so this is just going to be minus 288 times one. Okay? Right, so that means that f of x uh, is equal to f of 0, so let's, um, let's put arc cosine, so arc, let's write it up here, because I'm going to show you the second method, arc cosine of uh, 2x is equal to, so we've got f of 0, pi over 2, then uh, take away 2x, then plus 0, then minus 8 over 3 factorial, so minus 8 over 6, so 4 thirds, so minus 4 thirds x cubed, then 0, then minus 288 divided by 5 factorial, okay, so that's minus 12 fifths x to the 5, etc. Okay, so that is the McLaren series for arc cosine of 2x. <sighs> right, okay. So that was really long-winded, okay, and loads of room for error. So, how else could you have done this? Well, the thing is that you know that f of x now differentiates to this, okay? So that must integrate to that. So if we could find the expansion of that and then integrate the expansion, I should be able to arrive at the expansion for f of x. Okay? Now I can find the expansion of that using binomial expansion. Okay? So that's what I'm going to use. And we're going to see if we can get to the same thing. So I'm going to need... Um, I'm going to need that. Let's get rid of all that. Now, what did I have before? I know that f of 0 is uh, pi over 2. Okay? So, this is going to be my initial condition, right? So, I know that when I integrate, I'm going to get a plus c constant of integration, which I can find using that. So, I'm going to have minus 2 times pi. So, I've got 1 plus n times x, so minus a half times x, minus 4x squared, plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial minus 4x squared squared. Now, we need to have a think. Now, how far do I need to go? Because I'm going to integrate this, so I only need to go up to the x to the 4 term. But actually, when I expand that, I'm going to get an x to the 4. So I've actually gone as far as I need to go. So I don't need any more terms. So let's expand this out. I've got minus 2 times 1, minus 2. Minus 2 times minus half is just 1, times minus 4x squared. Right, now this one, I've got minus 2 times minus half, which is 1. So I've got the minus 3 halves, I'm dividing that by 2, and then I'm timesing by 16. So that's minus 12, and that's going to be x to the 4. Okay? So then when you integrate, so f of x is going to be equal to um, all of this integrated plus a constant. So I'm going to have a constant of integration. Minus 2 integrates to minus 2x. Minus 4x squared integrates to minus 4 thirds x cubed. And this is going to integrate to minus 12 fifths x to the 5, plus a load of other terms. Now I need to work out what that c is. Well, remember, I've got this bit of information. When x is 0, I know I've got pi over 2. So uh, that means f of 0 is pi over 2 implies that pi over 2 must be equal to c, take away 0, take away 0, take away 0, 
plus zero, etc. Okay, so that means that C has to be the pi over two, because all the other terms are just going to be x's, which are then going to be turned into zeros. So therefore, f of x equals pi over two, take away two x, take away four thirds x cubed, take away 12 fifths x to the five, etc. Right? That was a whole lot easier than continually differentiating. I get exactly the same result, uh, but that was a whole lot quicker. Okay? So if you can use the binomial expansion at any point to help you, then use it.